Is the outgoing government of President Muhammadu Buhari leaving Nigeria better than he met her in 2015? What are the hot points and what have been the low points of this administration? This morning on The Breakfast, we'll continue our assessment of this administration, the economic realities of the Muhammadu Buhari's presidency. One of the things that mark out a democracy is the respect for the rule of law and the interaction with the people who the leadership governs. Today we'll be looking at the social and legal issues of the Muhammadu Buhari presidency. How has it fared? Has it fared well or badly? We'll be taking a look at the headlines on some national dailies this morning as well with our guest on Off the Press who will join us to analyze them critically this morning on The Breakfast. And welcome to the Friday Flex edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Welcome to the show this morning. We'll be looking or zeroing in on the theme, organizing our time, key to success, and enjoying life. Like Michael Cree sang a, a long time ago, time, na money. Mm -hmm. So our theme today is organizing time, key to success, and enjoying life. Those who fail to plan have planned to fail. fail yeah. It's a popular saying. So how well do you organize your time? There are people who are very good in managing their time. Yeah. They're very good in in organizing themselves. They have this skill. They are called some of them are said to be melancholic in nature. And so they are good at Organizing things. If you enter their rooms or their spaces, you see everything well put in the right place and at the right time. But there are those who are scattered by nature. Yeah, you are very, very scattered. <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever we talk about uh, time management, some people think it is time uh, tied to work. Like you manage your time so that you can work. To now you're reading. Next time you're cooking. You're doing laundry. You're doing this and that. But also when you're talking about time, fun is in the picture as well. So if you manage your time well, time management also is important yeah. uh, for having fun. When are you going to have fun? Where, when are you going to rest? Where are you going to unwind? Kick out those sandals, uh, let down your hair, and make sure you have real fun. But knowing that the next time there is something else to do. Maybe wake up and go to work at 5 o'clock. Yeah, your scale of preference. Mm -hmm. You should be able to itemize them, mm -hmm. especially plan your week. Monday this I do, Tuesday this I do, Wednesday this I do, and then you tell yourself, what will I be doing this weekend? Oftentimes, we just allow things go by. Mm. Yeah, I know that a lot of things will come that you didn't plan for, but if you have a skeleton, as it were, yeah. of your plan for the week, it's going to be good. And it's not just like, um, when you think about planning for the week, some people might have it in their head that you, you use like two hours, three hours planning for the week. You may not necessarily do no, that, especially that. if you've been doing it over time. It mm -hmm. just, some things just fall into place that, okay, on Mondays, I go to work this, this time, and at work, this is what I'm supposed to do. I already know that, and I just fill in the gaps, as it were, so that uh, when that time comes, I will not be taken by surprise, except something else comes. There are those who believe that uh, what will be, will be. What, what do you say about that? Yeah, what will be, will be, but there are a lot of things that you also need to do. Exactly. Yes, because, you know... Um, uh, Jesus was, was going to die because what will be, will be. It was a day that he was going to die. But there was a Judas who chose to be the one to betray him. Mm. So, so uh, there was that human factor. There is also a human factor mm. contributing to whatever your destiny may, may be or something. If it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Mm -hmm. You know, things it's, like that. As I always say, balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> balance. Yes, balance. You must be able to draft out that skeletal mm -hmm. uh, plan that, okay, this barring all, against all odds, barring yeah. any kind of distractions, unforeseen circumstances, this and this and these are the things I hope to achieve mm -hmm. this week and then make room to accommodate. Uh, uncertainties or unplanned events, mm -hmm. uh, things could just come. Someone could just call you and say, hey, boy, I get something for you. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And so you should make room for that. Yeah. Bottom line, make good use of your time yeah. so that you do not waste your time because time cannot be got back if it's lost. Mm. Time One minute gone, you're not getting it back. 
Yeah, uh, like, like uh, my friend used to say, opportunity lost can never be regained. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in some cases, you regain them, but that's not the exact one because, okay, you could, you could have had an employment somewhere, you lost it. You may not, you may have another employment or that same one, but you didn't start at the time you were supposed to start. So you have lost it. If you have lost any time, any second, you cannot get it back. You're growing older and you're getting, getting nearer and nearer to the grave, as it were. We should also plan for that, you know. Oh, well, everyone who is alive, <laughs> say, well, not everyone. Everybody but, will say, not my portion. <laughs> some people say, some people would say everybody wants to get to heaven, but nobody wants, wants to, to die. die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but any living being, any living being, especially one who has a, conscious, uh, a consciousness of uh, his or her existence, knows that one day, mm -hmm. you know, you will go to meet your maker. The plan and the hope and the prayer is to go at a good ripe age. Mm -hmm. That's the prayer of everyone. Yeah. Let, 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 so that you'll be worthy of standing before his presence. And the thing, the thing about um, preparing for the afterlife is that it is either there is an afterlife or there isn't. So if you go there and find out there isn't, then you have nothing to lose. But what if you go there and find out there is, there is. and there's a reward for being a bad person? Then what do you do? Do you start <laughs> making amends at that point? So why not just you know, put in the effort and be a good person and be remembered for the good exactly. that you have put into life? Exactly. Because exactly. at the end of the day, what we leave behind is not the wealth, it's not anything but the name that we leave for people. I know of some people in Nigeria, even leaders, that have died and people closed bars and they were celebrating the death of somebody. Oh, don't remind me of what happened a certain time ago. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I remember I was in Just Plateau State mm -hmm. when that happened. Yeah. And it was initially was hush, 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 hush mm -hmm. because people were in show mm -hmm. and there were all sorts of um, uh, 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 tricks at getting people back then. If you spoke a certain way, yeah. you were apprehended and tortured. Those were the stories we heard. And so when it broke out back then, people were like, have you heard? Is mm -hmm. it true? And then when it eventually was confirmed, woo. Where, where I was when that news broke, uh, there were no res restrictions like that. We were not afraid people could arrest us. It was inside a village, not even mine. It's more village than my village, <laughs> a village of villages. And uh, I heard it from... Um, Radio Kudirat, you remember that? Oh, Radio, yes. Radio Kudirat, mm -hmm. I heard it from there. And once it comes from there, uh, it's like, okay, it's as good as uh, authentic. authentic. So if you saw the kind of jubilation there was on that day that someone died, you know, of all religions, people of all religions were rejoicing. I was like, okay, <laughs> are we not Christians anymore? That should pray for life and not rejoice over someone's calamity. Are we not uh, Muslims too that have respect for life? Are we not even traditional religions? It respects life mm -hmm. and all that. So, but everybody was just rejoicing like, oh, so you too can die. Uh, that should never happen to us. It should never happen. We should be like Hezekiah who, who challenged God and said, Remember the good things I've done. You say I should make, put my house in order so that I will die. My time has come. But remember the good things I have done. That was his prayer. He didn't say, Lord, please. He had something that could testify for him. I wish that all Nigerians, everybody on earth, could have something to testify for him rather than against him. Yesterday, when we learned of the news of the passing of Tina, Tina Turner, Turner, many, yeah. everyone across the globe mourned her passing because she mm -hmm. left for us things that we remember her by, mm -hmm. good things, positive things. Mm -hmm. Is it not the Bible that says, when the righteous prospers, the mm -hmm. people rejoice, rejoice when yeah. the wicked perish, you know, there are shouts of joy. So let us leave Legacies, even today, yeah. on a daily basis, as we live, even though sometimes we find ourselves uh, not feeling so good ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, but we must try to leave people feeling better than we met them. Mm -hmm. And that's why today we'll also be taking a look at how this outgoing administration mm -hmm. of President Muhammad Buhari is leaving Nigerian, mm -hmm. uh, Nigerians. How are they leaving Nigerians? Did they meet us? Are they leaving us better than they met us in 2015? And I believe one of the ways to do that is to go back to his script, 
to his inaugural speech in 2015 uh, and look at the promises he made. Because if you're going to um, judge someone's actions or inactions, you probably should start from what promises did he make yeah. you. So yesterday, as I was preparing for this, I, I went to look at his you speech. know some of the things he said back then. And there we have it on the screen. At home, we face enormous challenges, insecurities, pervasive corruption, and hitherto unending and seemingly impossible fuel and power shortages are the immediate concerns, the immediate concerns, we're going to tackle them head on. So today we're going to see how have they been able to match these words with actions yeah, well, in the past seven and a half years. Well, Buhari himself is playing the lizard, you know, you, you fall down and then you nod your head, I have tried. It's called the Agama lizard. <laughs> yeah, Agama lizard. So uh, I just saw uh, where he said that just like Paul said, I've run my race. What there is left for me is a crown of glory. And Buhari said in, in small words the same thing, that I have, I have run the course. I've done well for my people. I've kept my promises and all that. Waxing biblical. So, I saw that headline. I said, wow, that's yeah, so, good. It's yeah, good. We so have our leaders quoting I, I, the holy book. I, I don't know how he has run his race, but it depends on where you're standing. You know, there are people who will see him as a mini-god for what he has done because of how it, it has impacted on them and their families and their communities and all that. Okay, take for instance, maybe the people whose commercial activities will go up because of the second Niger Bridge, for instance, uh, they will glorify him and say a lot of things. Um, but the bulk of the people don't seem to uh, be on the same page with him. He says he has done well in security, he has done well in economy, he has done well in uh, whatever he said he was going to do. Uh, but some people are interpreting the I am for nobody and I am for everybody speech as saying that he was using style, as we put it, to tell us on your own. <laughs> whatever it is, you are on your own. But depending on where you stand, mm -hmm. let us try to x-ray what he has done as um, a president and is leaving us in a matter of days. On Tuesday, he will uh, no longer be a president. He would have returned to Daura and or possibly Niger, Niger mm -hmm. uh, if people like you disturb him a lot. He's going <laughs> to leave are, Nigeria what, for what you. What am I going to the disturb Japa him The syndrome for? is real. He will <laughs> leave Nigeria for you and go to Daura and have his peace of mind. Right. And so from the theme of the day, we'll go to our very first top trending on um, the Friday Flex today. Commercial banks to provide multi-purpose card as debit and national identity cards. Now, so commercial banks have been uh, uh, given the authorization to uh, bring out these cards. And that's according to Issa Pantami, uh, who, um, I mean, who, who, who disclosed this yesterday? The Minister of Commer Communications and Digital Economy uh, revealed this to um, newsmen uh, after this week's FEC meeting, mm. uh, saying that um, even though the National Identity Management Commission Act of 2007, that's the NIMC, only mandates Nigerians to have NIN, which you have. Every Nigerian, yeah. I believe, this day has their NIN. Almost every Nigerian. Well, almost every mm -hmm. Nigerian. But he's saying that there are significant demands for cards mm -hmm. by Nigerians, especially those living in the rural communities. And, and that it will be of no additional cost to Nigerians. So you walk to your bank and say, okay, I want a card. Mm. And so apparently what, the way it should go is that this card is going to have your NIN and then it also serve as your and bank card. Okay. So, uh, well, it's about time. Mm. You know, we, we always have been saying that the banks have the uh, details of everybody. They mm. have the BVN and everything else. And why didn't they in the first place give the, the banks this opportunity to do this? Because... Um, the clogging in the network that we experienced when we were trying to get the NIN was so much so that people had to spend months to mm -hmm. be able to get their NIN. The crowd was massive. People were paying through the nose, even if they tell us it is free. People were paying through the nose at, uh, at that time to get their NIN. So if they had given to the banks, you know, every bank will be looking for customers because some people who want their NIN may not even have bank accounts. So they will make it so easy that even if you don't have a bank account, you will come and open because I'm not sure they're going to give you when you're not a customer. You come and open an account and all that. Mm -hmm. And when this cash, um, cashless economy came up, by this time, almost everybody would have had a bank account. 
But now, some of the problems that we faced when we had the cash crunch was the fact that some people were not even having bank accounts, yeah. even though they were bankable adults, but they were not having bank accounts because they didn't see the need for it. And if you ask me truly, in Nigeria, I don't know why people will bank, why we even bank, because you're, you're running a savings account and you're losing money. You're running a current <laughs> account, account, you're losing, losing money. money. Whatever account you're running, you're losing money. You're making any transactions, there are about three or four cuts. Uh, this is for this tax, this is for this Hidden tax. Hidden charges and yeah. all of that. And then at the end of the day, you're sending um, a 1,000 naira to somebody. The person is collecting 800 naira or at least or 900 naira. So if the problem to be solved was 1,000 naira, he will now have to look for another 100 naira to go and add up to that. It, doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. But now that NIMC uh, is now saying the banks should do this, I do hope that it is not too late and it will be very seamless and it will be very, very easy for everybody to get this. But what about the people who are still in the villages? Did they say something or did they do something or are they going to do something to make sure they capture these people? Because there are still people who do not have any faith in the banks. Or even if they have the faith, well, whether you getting have faith to the banks the is bank a very, not, very difficult thing. Yeah, the banks are there. And every state, even if you, they do not have banks in the core villages, mm. uh, the people you call the unbanked, uh, the state capitals would have banks. And so they would have to move until the time when Nigeria evolves where to the point where the core villages will have banks. Uh, the current reality on ground is that every state capital at least would have banks. Okay, let me, so let those me, let who need these let me give cards you would have this, to go to is, their state capitals and get Let me tell you banks. why this is very terrible. <laughs> let, permit the word terrible. Let me use Cross River, where I come from. Okay. From my village to the state capital is an average of seven hours drive. Oh, wow. On a good road from my village. From my village also to my local government uh, headquarters is about two hours drive. Mm -hmm. So if the driver is rough or has an SUV... Why? Is it because of the distance or bad roads? Distance and the road. So if the driver is um, the driver that speeds, let me not even use bad roads because it's easier to get to a Bonny state than to get to my local government headquarters. Mm -hmm. So. If it takes you like one and a half hours to get to the local government headquarters and you're paying like 2,000 naira to get there or you're going to the state capital and you're paying like 6,005 to get to the state capital, mm -hmm. how do you expect that old woman, that old man to go to the bank because he wants to have an NIN? It's, it's just, well, that is a good question, yes. and, and I, I do not mean to... There's a local government that doesn't have a bank. They call it um, Okboma local government area. Mm. Oh, yeah, a local government area. They do not have a bank from Okuku to Yahe to Okboma to everywhere. They don't have a bank in a local government. And to travel around that local government, it, I, I, don't, I can't even put the number of hours that you will take. The entire local government doesn't have a bank. So how do you capture those people? What sort of, what, what is your state again? Because <laughs> <laughs> I come from Delta State and I say that proudly. Yeah. And I didn't mean to uh, be, make little of the concerns that you're yeah. raising. Mm -hmm. uh, and I imagine that is the reality of so many people in the country. Yes. Um, and it's very unfortunate that we are in the 21st century where people in Nigeria in any part of our state, mm -hmm. do not have at least one bank in their local government area. I am shocked to hear you say this. Mm -hmm. As I said, I'm from Delta State, and we do not have that level of underdevelopment. And that's not from the, my the most backward state. That's not the most backward state. No, but it, it, that's no. the reality. And whether the government likes it or not, whether we shy away from that reality or not, but it's still there. So people are... Well, I don't know, because of the policy ostracized, or, <laughs> or I don't know how to put it, but there are people who do not feel this impact, and they, they don't, they're not being well, factored into everything. Well, I hope that the everything. incoming administration in your state would take up the challenge and do what oh, they need to do. banks? Moving, <laughs> it's opening up the state so that more banks will be open. Because if the states are not made viable, banks will not need to come. They wouldn't mm. even want to go there because banks are set up for profit. Okay. And if the states are not made viable, they are not 
if, if there's no business for them there, they wouldn't come. Anyway, that's a matter for another day. Um, well, we also have this topic, we're talking about uh, um, people in Delta State. <laughs> yeah, my state. My state. Delta State. Yes, yes, Where yes. children in secondary school and primary school are initiated in what they call uh, the snake initiation. Yeah. Well, the police has come out to say that it is false that um, they went and did investigation. I saw a video where uh, one young boy was doing the said initiation on the police um, uh, policeman that went, the, mm -hmm. the investigating officer that went, and he had the marks. He used the paper rubbed on the back of the hand, mm -hmm. and the policeman had the marks. So they said it was not a snake bite and mm -hmm. all that. But it is a game that they call snake bite. Be that as it may, mm. whatever they do, there you have pictures yeah, of whatever some they do pills. brings wounds to the hands of the, the children. Mm. What kind of a game is that? And the policeman, the police uh, released a statement and said parents should ignore the falsehood uh, that uh, the NGO man was yes, giving. Yes, uh, Harrison Guamnishu. Yeah, he shared on that on they should ignore. Story. Whatever that media is, account. whether it's an initiation or not, I think it's something that must stop. The Delta State uh, Commissioner for Information issued a statement on this. Mm. He, he said they have looked into it and he was blaming, um, well, he's calling on parents to be more responsible mm -hmm. uh, in, and be more diligent over their wards and children. And uh, there you have the pictures. Uh, the fact of the matter is, whether it is true or not, whether there is a false alarm or not over this, yeah. there is, you can see the marks, whatever they represent can possibly be just ordinary games. Mm. These are humps. I mean, if you did that on my skin, yeah. I'll feel some pain. Yeah. So it's not something to celebrate or ignore. Mm -hmm. So parents indeed, just as the commissioner has said, should watch out and be diligent and see mm. to it that their wards are not affected by this. And if their children have these marks on their hands, mm. they should get to the root of it, get to the schools, find out who the friends of your children are, what is going on, how did you come about this? Yeah, a lot of times parents are blamed, parents are called upon to be more careful and all that, but the fact that maybe I'm putting my child in school because I don't have time to homeschool that, that child, I don't have time to be with that child. Homeschool is not even legal yeah. yet. So, so right now, I'm at work, like now, if I, if I move at 5 o'clock mm -hmm. and I have children, and then I know that they're going to have a bus, a school bus come, and maybe I have a nanny that takes them to that point where the bus takes them. The children are in school from, let's say, 7.30 or 8 o'clock till sometimes 5 o'clock because they have uh, some classes after the regular classes and all. Yeah. So they are with you. When I come back in the evening, I'm so tired. I may not have much time except for weekends to be with my children. So the children are mostly with the schools who accepted the responsibility of taking care of them when I'm not there. Mm -hmm. So while the parents will be looking at the wounds, maybe attending PTA meetings if they have the time and all that, and maybe making some calls, there is also a primary responsibility for the schools that these mm -hmm. children go to. Definitely. So they shouldn't push it, push it to the parents. No, he only. didn't restrict I know the that, blame. He also included the school and even went ahead to say that any school found, you know, to have, been, to have this in existence, this cultism, will be shut down. My so first experience with cultism was in a secondary school. None of the children that was involved was up to 17. In a secondary school, I was teaching in Aquaibum at that time, and then the problem came up, and the children were brought to the assembly, and from their talk, you would know it was true. And that was also when I got to know about um, love potion from well, these kids. Oh, okay, well... Cultism has, has got into the secondary school. Yes. Just like you, during my youth service, national youth service, I taught in a school in Port Harcourt. Mm. And I got to see and, uh, and hear a lot of things just like you, you did. And it is something that calls for serious concerns. It does. Our concerns. children should be left to be pure, innocent, and unassuming. Children should just be allowed to be children. Yes. Don't steal their innocence and purity from them because they can't, you, they can't get it back. And once you damage a child, it takes almost a lifetime 
to heal that child. Mm -hmm. So people should really, schools, lots of schools have been found culpable in recent times of negligence. And so schools should really be on top of their games and making sure that the children left under their care are well protected in mm -hmm. every way possible. Yeah. And as parents, no matter how busy we are, and we know we, we know how busy we can be in yeah. making money, take care of these children. But if you do not make our time in the course of your busy schedules to look into the welfare of these children, ultimately that money will not even help you in helping the children. Mm -hmm. Because when your children get damaged, that money can't fix them. Can't fix them. True. So we must learn to make our time from time to time to go to these schools once in a while, you can't attend all the meetings. And sometimes when you can't attend, delegate someone to go. Mm. Because oftentimes the teachers have something to say about your child. Mm. Either they commend the child or they say, okay, the child is, is weak in this area or is strong in this area, or please prep him or prep her in this way or that. So it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's synergy that's required between the parents and the teachers mm. to make sure that these children turn out all right at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, that's our future we're toying with, toiling, toying with, yeah, if we do not do the right thing. So like you always say, the balance should yeah. be there. Parents, teachers, everybody should be involved. And before now, the child belonged to a community and everybody was concerned. Uh, today is not much like that, but in the chain of people who should take responsibility, everybody should do their job. Well, we'll take a short break here. And, when and we give you the weather report. <laughs> yeah, the we have the weather report. report uh, yeah, and then after that, we go to the headlines. Stay with us. Stay with us.